train, then the best way is to go to Ratcha TV BTS and take the Klong San Seb canal boat to the end of the route, which is Panfar. And just around the corner is Wat Saket, the Golden Mount. Well, the idea of this walk is to set off just before sunset and get to Wat Saket just around about the time when you can see it setting over the area you're going to be walking in. And then this walk, it takes you around all the old city to the sites. There's not many people around. And I think this is the best time because you get a bit of peace and quiet. I'm on the Panfar Leela Bridge, which goes over the Klong Banglam Pu. Now this is the location of the old city gate. This was the main gate between the Royal Plaza and Rajadermian Avenue. And as you went through the gate, the guards on sentry duty would be watching you from the Mahakan Fort. Now I can't show you a picture of the fort today because it's been renovated, but here is an old photo. About 300 metres in along Mahachai Road, after the old city wall, this is the place if you want to fuel up for the walk because there's a lot of street food stalls around here. Plus, there's the famous Tipsamai Pad Thai shop and apparently it's the best in Thailand. There's always a queue there. Also around here, you can grab a coffee or a beer before we take a back street towards the Bangkok City Hall and the giant swing. And this is the giant swing, which is listed by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. It dates back to 1784, and there was an old Brahmin ceremony where people would swing from the top and try to grab treasure or gold. And if they grabbed it, they kept it. A lot of people died, unfortunately, and this ceremony was outlawed in 1935. Recently, they tried to revive it for tourism purposes, but that, as you can probably tell, didn't happen. So this is Sigak Sao Chin Cha intersection. When you come out the top of Bang Mung Roing Road, you take a right along Tanau Road and you get to an area where there's lots of street food stalls. And this is another place where you have the option to refuel if this walk is taking its toll a bit. But uh, it's only been a couple of kilometers, so there's no excuse for that. This empty building has probably got a ghost story connected to it somewhere. If I ask one of the locals, they may tell me, but I'm not. Anyway, it was once part of the Royal Palace and it belonged to Prince Naratip. He was a big fan of drama and theatre and he opened it up as a first ever 
theatre in Thailand showing musical dramas. And at some point in history, I'm not sure what year, because it doesn't say, it became Suksa Talapap School. And that closed in 1995. And the building has been left ever since. They're trying to raise funds to renovate it. And if I show you a few photos of it during the day, you'll see what I mean. It's in a pretty precarious state. When you get to the end of Praying Nala Road, you get to Artsadang Road. This runs alongside the old city moat and we're actually behind the Ministry of Defence building. We're going to have a look at a couple of bridges along the old city moat with some pretty interesting stories behind them. This bridge dates back to 1911 and it was designed by the Queen of King Rama V and it has two names. First it was called Sapan Mu because it was built in the year of the pig and then it was given the name Sapan Pi Kun and it has the unique distinction of being the only bridge designed by a queen. This is the Sapan Han, the lifting bridge, and there were six built altogether. The other five were across the river in Tonbury. This is the last remaining one, and it's a replica, the seventh replica to be built in this spot. So as I escape the hungry dog, we head back up the other side of the old city moat, back towards Chong Rong Si Bridge, and as you can see, the Ministry of Defence there. We're going to take a left and that will take us out to the Ministry of Defence, the front of it, with the Grand Palace opposite. So this is the final leg of our old city walk and I hope you're not too tired yet watching me do all the leg work. When the Ministry of Defence building was built in 1887, it was designed to be exactly symmetrical all the way around, right down to the last centimetre. So it makes it very unique in that way, but I don't know if anyone's actually measured it, but I'm not going to ask. Anyway, just beyond that is the City Pillar Shrine, and then opposite on this side of the road is the Grand Palace, whose design was taken from quite a few different influences at the time when it was built in 1785 and we're going to head towards the MRT station at Sanam Chai. There's a few other things to look at on the way, but this is the final straight. Just behind the statue of King Rama IV is Saran Rom Palace. That was the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for a while, and before that it was a place where royal guests were entertained. So any visiting kings or queens or princes from abroad would stay there. Last time I was here, we were under pretty deep lockdown and a lot of these buildings and temples weren't lit up the way they are now. So if you're gonna do this walk, it's worth coming just to see what Po lit up the way it is. It's pretty stunning. Anyway, on this side of the road is the Territorial Defense Command and that sits right at the beginning of Charon Krung Road. And that road was the first properly constructed road in Thailand. It goes through Chinatown, through Bang Rak, and as far as Rama III. Now you can probably see part of it just behind me. That's the old clock tower. And they say whatever time is displayed on that clock is known as official Thailand time. And in the old days, when not a lot of people had watches, they could look up and see exactly what the time was. <laughs> Well, 
Well, we've come to the end of the walk now. This is the MRT station at Sanam Chai. And as you can see behind me, it's the Museum of Siam lit up pretty beautifully. That's definitely worth a visit.